Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau blasted the invitation of Nazi-linked veteran Yaroslav Hunka to Canada's Parliament Friday, where he was met with a standing ovation. Here's what he told reporters yesterday. Obviously, it's extremely upsetting that this happened. Uh, the speaker, speaker has uh, acknowledged his mistake uh, and has apologized. Uh, but this is something that is deeply embarrassing to the Parliament of Canada and, by extension, to all Canadians. Uh, I think particularly of Jewish MPs and all members of the Jewish community across the country who are uh, celebrating Yom, or commemorating Yom Kippur today. Trudeau seemed to blame the mishap on Russian propaganda. Let's take a look. I think it's going to be really important that all of us push back against Russian propaganda, Russian disinformation, and continue our steadfast and unequivocal support for Ukraine, uh, as uh, we did last week with announcing uh, further measures to stand with Ukraine in uh, Russia's illegal war against it. Sure, Michael, what does Russia have to do uh, with Brie, this? I was going to ask you that same question. I am baffled by that response. <laughs> the Russians didn't force the Canadians to invite this guy and then give him a standing ovation. I mean, that was bizarre. It was bizarre, but it is not uh, out of or, turn, exactly. Yeah, it is yeah. It is completely consistent with what has been going on um, in, among liberals, where every uh, faux pas, every misstep seems so easily attributed to somehow Putin. I mean, this, this whole um, scandal has uh, provoked an interesting uh, debate, at least on leftist Twitter, about whether or not um, there, people are kind of using, on the, on the right, are using this moment and making fun of Trudeau uh, and dunking on the embarrassment of the Canadian Parliament giving a Nazi a, sta a standing ovation as a way to, insula uh, to kind of wash their hands of their own kind of entanglement with various Nazi actors over the years. Um, Lauren Loomer um, was dunking on a clip of this standing ovation, and people were pointing out that she was known to have been having a very intimate social interaction um, with uh, the well-dressed Nazi, whose name just flew out of my head. Um, the famous white supremacist who was down at the you will not replace us rally. Richard Spencer, oh, sorry, Spencer. Richard Spencer. Whatever happened to that guy? Well, wow. for a while there, he was consorting with Lauren Loomer at the bar. And so there's this question of, you know, is there a certain opportunism at play here yeah. among some conservatives who are saying, well, if I, if I make fun of Canadians for doing this, maybe everybody will forget all the Nazis I've been hanging out with. Um, Nick Fuentes is in the where are, Brie, where are these? I mean, it's am not I very in a bubble? Many. I've never, well, I won't say never, but at least to my knowledge, I have not ever been around a Nazi. I don't think I've ever hung out with any Nazis. So, like, where are people finding all of these Nazis all of well, a sudden? Well, that's a good question, because they do, you would think they'd be relatively hard to find. Yes. But here they are having dinner with Donald Trump in the form of Nick Fuentes, yes. hanging out with Kanye West. Getting standing ovations. Uh, getting... <laughs> Yeah, here I think we actually have the Lauren Loomer tweet here for you to look at. Oh, this is this is my response to it. She has, she had tweeted uh, down below um, a quote tweet uh, and laughing about uh, exactly Ukrainian Nazis, you know, right. presumably condemning them. And I, you know, pointed out that that's her and Richard Spencer pictured there in a rather intimate sort of uh, embrace. You know, and, and I, it's, I just, it kind of it feels like everybody's wrong, right? Every, yeah, <laughs> there's just yeah, too many Nazis afoot, yeah. generally speaking. It is just really odd to me that these folks are popping up everywhere. Maybe it just appears everywhere because we're talking about it. But in my everyday life, I mean, I hang around a lot of people that are very diverse. I, I mean, Brie, I just don't ever recall seeing anybody or having conversations about, man, you know, so-and-so was hanging out with a Nazi yesterday, but yet all of our political actors appear <laughs> to be hanging out, supporting, having dinner, giving applause to, taking advice from people who clearly have beliefs that we, I think most Americans would say, aren't representative of our values in this country. Yeah, I mean, they're, the, the line the approach that's been taken by many conservatives is to push back against arguments from liberals and the left that there has been a rise in anti-Semitism and sure. hate crimes. Mm -hmm. um, Elon Musk has insisted that that's not the case on Twitter. People have insisted broadly that um, arguments in favor or arguments that seem to support a rise in hate crimes are a tool of authoritarianism. 
you know, yeah. people wanting to implement more hate crime laws um, and to ratchet up penalties for whatever is deemed hate crime, want you to believe in those statistics, even though they're, they're not true. So there's pushback. And it is frustrating because there's so much politicization in the conversation. You know, it came up on the show recently and it seemed like there was nothing, there was no source I could cite for that would satisfy Robbie as credible that would point to any evidence of there being more incidents of uh, racial, racially, eth ethnically, or religiously motivated crimes. And so if we're in a place where you think that anybody who's doing that research is biased because they're trying to... Because of the politics. Because of the politics yeah. of it. Yeah. Then we're in a world where what we just don't measure that's, if there's hate see, crimes the and, until politics people are frog marching down that, the street. That I really hate. I have to be honest, and I love politics. But I don't think we should be in a place where we can't have open and honest conversations about hatred. I mean, there, there is nothing acceptable about that. You know, I mean, I have grandparents, for goodness sakes, who grew up in the segregated South that are still alive. Of course. So to me, those conversations, and there is no debate on this. We, we shouldn't debate this. We shouldn't be hanging out with people who are Nazis. We just shouldn't. Well, sure, Michael. End of con whether you're a Democrat, whether you're a Republican, <laughs> there's just no excuse, in my opinion, to hang out with those sorts of people. And I am, again, baffled that this seemingly continues to happen from our hip-hop artists to politicians in the U.S., to the Canadian Parliament. And what's weird to me, Brian, we spoke about this yesterday, not a single person on any of these individuals' staff Research these people to say, wait a minute, we should not invite this person to dinner in the case of Trump because Trump said, I didn't know who or this guy was. Or they did and they don't care. Or, or that. Or in the case of Canada, I think the member who invited him, he said, I had no clue who this guy was. How is that possible? I mean, you'd, to research people, you'd have to have people in doing investigations and like studying white supremacy and studying anti-Semitism. And, and people aren't interested in doing that. You have, I'm sorry, you have Republicans shutting down entire departments of colleges that study the history of racism and how not to repeat some of these mistakes of history because apparently learning about black studies or anti-black racism is not considered to be Viable. I think you you have a debate on the left that's going on right now about whether or not Cornell West is it's appropriate for him to even bring up the idea of white supremacy if if it's too woke for him to reference white supremacy. I mean, look, I, I just I am of the belief, and I hope I'm right about this, that most people who watch this show, most Americans generally speaking, do not stand on the side of hate. Whether they're a Republican, whether they're Democrats, I think most of the Canadian people, Canada's a beautiful place, I've been many times, I think most of them are likely appalled by what they saw from their elected officials. Uh, so I, I, I just, I want to hope, I want to believe that this is not representative of most people. And I think most people go on about their daily lives interacting with a whole host of different people without any problems. And then we have these instances that remind us that these things still exist, unfortunately. Well, journalist Glenn Greenwald chimed in on X saying it's obviously shocking that Trudeau, Zelensky and the entire Canadian parliament gave a standing ovation to a Nazi soldier. But it's not surprising. The last decade, Western political and media circles warned Nazism was dominant in Ukraine, especially among its fighters. And that's true. I think yesterday on the show, I pointed to the fact that there was uh, in the two and a 2018 uh, spending bill tucked into by Rokana and I believe yeah. some others, um, a provision saying that our funding to Ukraine has to very specifically not go to the Azov Battalion and Nazis. Which I, which is so funny because I did research that yesterday, and you mentioned it. I was able to find it, and remember, I asked. I said, "Well, Bree, what has changed?" So, Bree, I did try to find mm -hmm. if there were any r recent or updated reports that showcased the House put together a, a select subcommittee to sort of investigate these claims. Mm -hmm. Say, okay, we investigated; it's not true. We're going to give the money. Bree, I couldn't find a single thing. And I looked. I, mm -hmm. I looked for like two hours yesterday. I could not find a single thing, which goes to the point that I think you and I both agreed. They just don't particularly care. And that's Democrats and Republicans. I'm not choosing one side or the other on this, because both yeah. of them are supporting sending hundreds of billions of dollars uh, to Ukraine uh, for this proxy war in, in Russia. And again, I understand the arguments that have been made by leaders on both sides. I understand the arguments that's been made by uh, the, the defense officials, the president, et cetera. But again, I don't think most people are comfortable sending money to Nazis. I, I don't think most Americans are okay with that. Well, I, they think, I, 
I think many of them are because they just don't believe that that a significant portion of the people in Ukraine are Nazis, and I, and I don't think that they are. I think well, yeah, I'm a, not, a, a minority. I want to be clear. I'm not saying it's, that. It's just a question of what your comfort level are. Is people will say, yeah. well, there are a number of people, a significant number of people in the American military who espouse racist views and other kinds of bigoted views that I don't support. Um, but so, the comfort level of that is what it is. But the comfort level of our members was clearly not very high in 2018, which you educated me on. And again, it goes back to that point. Why are they all all of a sudden comfortable now? What's changed? Yeah, that, I can find a change. Well, I, I think the big question is, even if there are a small percentage of the population, why do they all end up in Congress and being awarded medals by John Stewart and on the front page of the New York Times? Like, I can accept that it's a, it's a minority within a minority sure. and that you shouldn't tarnish the good reputation of all of the Ukrainians. But then somebody has some questions to answer about why, if you're picking a Ukrainian soldier out of a hat to Just come and be to awarded, be a Nazi one. Why, is it, why is it a Nazi? An actual 90, well, how old is he? Someone who's literally not just like the this grandson of a Nazi. a long time. Fully a first hand, yeah. I fought against the Russians, for our Adolf allies. For Adolf Hitler, for Hitler. For Hitler. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, wow. we'll have more rising for you right after this.